morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank you all for coming in this morning. Sharing the word. We want to thank each and everybody out there on the internet. The views are wonderful sermons that we do and the words that we preach from the Lord. We appreciate your time in it. So, with that being said, this week and during the weeks, the Lord has put an extreme heavy thing on my heart and has told me, you need to discuss this and need to talk about this. And I went and did a lot of research and a lot of looking, and it ended up coming out of the book of John, 1 John. And it is going to be the entire chapter 1 of 1 John. It's a small chapter, it's not very big, it's only 10 verses. But there's something in it that needs to be discussed and needs to be brought up to each and every one of you. So, with that being said, I will go ahead and start beginning on it. Introduction to the testimony to Christ. That which was for the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shown unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Well, in the notes here, it says, John heard a blow altitude to his witness status, that of which he speaks. He has witnessed personally. His witness pertains to the word of life, which is the proclamation concerning the one in whom was life was manifested means appeared. The life of John and others is what one John seeks to convey into its readers. John says, this life which is summed up and was shown forth in Jesus Christ was with the Father. This statement echoes and points to Christ's pre-existence, his external, ex eternal presence, and oneness with the God, the Father. Folks, there's no question about it. It's written right here. With everything that has gone on in this day and age right now, including the last event of Hurricane Harvey, and the devastation of what would happen out there. If we watch and look and see what those people did, they did what is in the Word of God. They didn't care what color you were. They didn't care what creed you were. They didn't care what religion you were. All they cared about out there was making sure that humankind God's children were brought back and protected Amen. and taken care of. Amen. That's what this is about. As we go on, that which we have seen and heard declared unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his son Jesus Christ and these things written we unto you that your joy may be full 
In the notes I have, John seeks to establish and perhaps broaden the fellowship between himself and his readers. Fellowship here means a close association or relationship. In Christian terms, this means mutual acceptance of and submission to the verities of Christ's Christian faith. It means sharing the personal knowledge of and heartfelt obedience to God through Jesus Christ. A major purpose of its state in, but another purpose is stated here for the repentance and no doubt John as well to enjoy and share in the deep sense of satisfaction and purpose that knowing Christ and walking with him brings. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what it brings. It brings joy. It brings fulfillment. It brings everything. The more fellowship you have with another, the more you talk about Jesus Christ, you talk about the Lord, you walk within the Lord, you show within the Lord, the more you shine, then more people shine. And by the time you know it, you have a full fellowship of knowing what the God has to say. And you feel better about it. Your heart feels better about it. God feels better about it. Praise God. Amen. Now we go on. This then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. You know, that's the honest, true example of walking in the light. People say, well, I've walked in the light. I've walked with God. I know what's going on. But yet, if you're walking in the light, then why are you still doing the sinful things that Satan has got you doing? Why are you still walking with other people that are not of the light of God? Why are you still walking around with people that have nothing to do with God? Why are you still going out there and doing and teaching and explaining to people what you think is right but is not in the light of God? Folks, this is being in the true light of God. Nothing else. Amen. Nothing else. <laughs> And as they say, well, you're only talking about this book or that book. Ladies and gentlemen, this whole book right here is your instructions for life. Everything that is going on today, everything that is happening today, I don't care if it's in the New Testament or the Old Testament, it's in all the Testaments. All of it. And you need each and every part of this book so you can sustain the light of God in you. So you can be that shining beacon. So people can come up to you and ask you, Why are you so bright? Why are you so... So you can explain to them, I found Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let me show you. Hallelujah. Now we go on for the last three verses in it. If we say that we have no sin... We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we may him make Him a liar and His words are not in us. I'm going to read 
a very important section in here. It says in our notes, Simplicity means that God is not complex, compounded, or divisible in His nature. Simplicity does not deny the three distinct persons of the Trinity. The three distinct persons all share in the same sense of God. Neither does this mean that it is easy to understand all that is to be known of God because one, sin has the unlimiting effect upon human understanding and two, man's understanding is finite whereas God is infinite. Yes, it is. We're finite. We only think in one way. We only think what the way is. God's is infinite. He thinks in every way. He gives you everything. He bestows on you what you need, how you need it, and how to get it. Not to take. Not to destroy. And he also, when he takes away your sins, he takes away everything, including everything that deals with the past. And anything that happens in the past. To tell you, give it to me. Let it go. Hand it to me. I will take that burden for you. I will hold that burden for you. So you can be the child of God and enjoy and love what I have given you. Not to sit there and go, well, I don't have this, or I'd like to have that, or I got... Forget it! Let it go. Also says down here, the light, God is the light. To walk in the light, which is to live free from bondage to sin. It's to make true communion between believers possible. Jesus' violent death on the cross, which is what blood signifies, it is intentional. Antidote for an ultimate defense against sin's presence and power. Right there. There it is, right there in a note. It's how you get rid of sin. That's how you handle sin. You plead it in the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything. Amen. He dripped every single drop of that blood on that ground for our sins. while he was on that cross. And he will make it for each and every one of you to enjoy life. If you give up the sins, if you give up your past bondages, bondage is the sin. Give up that bondage. Release your heart. Let the light shine through you. Let him shine through you like he should shine through you. <clears throat> To deny one's sinfulness or sins is not just to deceive oneself. It is to make God's liar by denying His Word. Both Old Testament and New Testament stresses the university of man's sin. There it is right there. That's why I say this whole book is needed. They have different aspects of saying to do it year by year. Or doing the whole book through the whole year. Reading the whole book. My suggestion to each and every one of the persons, start at the beginning, end with the end. Start back at the beginning, end with the end. 
don't memorize it, there's no need to memorize every verse. There's no need to it. But put it in your heart. So you can be that shining beacon of light out there. So when it's time, you're ready for His army. You're ready to be anybody down a sin, including Satan himself. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so very much for the words that you have given us today. May it enrich our minds, may it enrich our hearts and our souls. May it make us able to walk in the light that you have given us so we can give you our sins. Because by your stripes, Lord, you have washed away all of our sins and helped us to be a very better, better Christian. Also, we want to take the time and let everybody know online that is able to see it there in Texas that Hurricane Harvey has dissipated and has gone away. And the healing processes have started. Our prayers are with you out there to make you strong and make you do what you need to do. That you have persevered and have gone forward. That the state of Texas does know what it needs to do and knows how to handle it well. As a congregation, all of us say this in your gracious Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.